All right, here we are. Here we are. Hello. Lance, Bryce. Hi. We're back for another episode of Gaming Rainbow. This is episode number... 108 or 109. 108, I think. Yeah. 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 And if you haven't seen the earlier ones, (laughs) there's a good reason for that. But um, we'll have those up soon. (laughs) So what are we talking about today, Lance? Today we're going to be talking about Dust 514. Yeah, that's 514. Uh, I think you're going to give us a review on Ridiculous Fishing for the iPhone. Exactly, yes. Okay, Bryce, you're going to be talking about... I'm going to talk about the Xbox One. The Xbox One. And then uh, we'll round it up with a little PlayStation 4 discussion. So um, I guess we should start off with... What do you want to start off with, Lance? What's your call today? I guess we can start off with Dust 514. All right, so Dust 514 is a free first-person shooter on the PlayStation system. It's a PlayStation 3 exclusive. Uh, who knows whether it'll be on uh, the air conditioning kicking on. That's good. We forgot about that. Um, it, it might be on PS4 and Xbox One. I'm sure they're actually planning on expanding it uh, as it gets more successful. But what it is is a first-person shooter, and it's tied into the MMO called EVE Online. And EVE Online is like a big galactic space settling game. Like mm-hmm. you, yeah. you conquer planets, uh, you have international stellar corporations. It's uh, been around for a long time, I think 10, 15 years, right? I think it may have just gotten a big update recently. or Yeah, like but it, it's, it's a, been around a long time. It has, uh, I think, some real money exchange that goes yeah. on in the game. There's... Uh, Every once in a while in some of the game magazines, they do like a summary of what's happened in the last six months in the game because there's all sorts of machinations between the players and alliances form and crumble. Mm -hmm. And this Dust game uh, allows you to be a mercenary on the ground actually fighting for control of the various planets that the other players are all playing at the interstellar level. So you're a corporation and you say, I want to take over that planet. You uh, hire some mercenaries, and then the people who are playing Dust 514 actually go in there in first-person shooter mode, and they're actually shooting it out for control of the planet. So uh, we'll take a look. I've got some footage here, and I cover kind of getting into the start of the game and my impressions of it, and then we'll come back, and I'll give you a little summary. reflections of the apartment here. Welcome, soldier. You're about to jump into a galaxy of opportunity, wealth, destruction, and death. If you are adequately prepared, you are far less likely to die violently on the battlefield. Your war begins long before the first shot is fired. The equipment you choose, including your drop suit, weapons, and vehicles, will determine not only your odds of survival, but also your role on the battlefield. This equipment must be purchased from the marketplace and will not be returned to you should you lose consciousness or life in battle. We are now on planet. Special, I'd say, but decent. What the heck is causing me to stick here? Objective A, 
So, as you can see, I wasn't too uh, happy with the the tutorials. I thought were kind of a little rough. Like they didn't really explain what you were spending money on, and and I think there'll be a slight amount of confusion with some people. There's two different currency systems. There's the real money system, which is called Orem, which is like sort of a play on gold, and everything's yellow. And then there's the, the sort of the virtual in-game currency, which is blue. And so when you're playing the game, you earn blue currency all the time. And you know the game's free to play. You can use that, buy equipment and everything. But if you want to get all the good stuff, yeah. you've actually got to go buy some, some real money currency, which is the gold stuff. And then you can use that to get the best weapons, the best yeah. stuff. So it pretends to be like free, except you're pretty much wasting your money anyway. Yeah, exactly. And the other aspect that I didn't really seem to get a grip on or see what was going on was the interaction with the actual EVE Online players. So supposedly you're working for all these real people playing, you know, space empires or whatever, but there was no chat with them. I didn't see messages or, like, there wasn't a, a job board where you're like, oh, I want to go work for this guy and conquer this planet or whatever. So that was all kind of vague. The game's been out for... I don't know, since fall of last year. Yeah. So the game's very actually pretty smooth. Yeah. I will say that. It plays fine as a shooter. They're just, uh, I think it's still got a ways to go before it really kind of finds its character, I guess. It's interesting because this is really the first free-to-play game that's actually been on a console. Um, it's one of the first, at least. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's, uh, I think Realms Online, is a, which is one of these little free RPGs, is oh. available on, like, the PSN and the Xbox. But this is the, like certainly no huge first person shooter I mean the graphics this is like a regular yeah. shooter like Call of Duty or whatever and the graphics are pretty nice I did experience a ton of slowdown at the end of uh, an afternoon of playing mm -hmm. and I don't know if that was a bug in the game or it was just uh, network congestion or you know what was going on but the, it dropped into the single digits the frame rate it was really bad and so I stopped playing uh, of course the rest of development came, was I think that was hitting Netflix at that time and it was Sunday, Saturday evening, Sunday or something. I don't know wherever you are in the world. So it could have been that. That just, you know, if a lot of people jump on your network, yeah, it's going to bog down. So, but anyway, uh, I would say it's worth checking it out. If if you're into Eve Online, you definitely want to check it out. Yeah. Um, if you want to play a free first-person shooter, that's actually, it's pretty good. It's got good mechanics. Um, you just have to put in the effort to learn what's going on because it yeah. is a bit confusing. I would have to say at first. So that's the wrap up of Dust Five One Four. Very good. Okay. All right, Lance, should we go to it? We don't have commercials, so we can't cut to a commercial break. You want to talk about Ridiculous Fishing? I guess I could. All right, so give us a brief summary of what Ridiculous Fishing is about. Ridiculous Fishing, in a way, it's ridiculous, actually. So <laughs> they chose the best name for it. That's good. Because once you start playing, like, it's you figure it's a game where you have to wait, like, to catch a fish and it goes around. But instead, you're pretty much pulling your line into the water. Mm -hmm. You have to dodge all the fish once you're in the water, and if you accidentally catch a fish, which that will happen a lot in the game, you'll have to go back up and you'll have to catch all the fish, and once the lion catches up into the sea, well, where your boat is, then you have to start fish shooting them in the air with any kind of weapon that you can afford from the in-game shop. Weapons, huh? Yes. <laughs> so you start blowing away the fish when they get up to the surface? Exactly. All right, uh, I think there's a sc screenshot we've got of what the graphics look like here. And then at the end. Yeah, oh, there, there it goes. Is. It's actually kind of a neat style of graphics. Yeah. Yes. That, that stuff, so. So once you start the game, you start at the home waters, which is the first part of the map that you're going to be at. As soon as you start playing the game, you get lots of upgrades and fish types. And you, should, and you can also view the fish types in your Fishopedia on your wooden iPhone on the game. There's also a social media thing on the game, but that's only like for less, technically. So you can also get stuff at the store to help you in your game. And there's lots of stuff, and also customization which you can achieve in the store by collecting all the fish, so. And then once you go farther in the game, you can, you can view the map, which you have, and you can see all the places that you can start fishing. 
it takes a lot of time to load sometimes. But once you start actually playing, you start diving into the game. And then that's where the heart and that's where the get, get that's where the game gets hard. And you start to try to dodge all the fish that you go through while you're trying to dive. And so if you've achieved this in the story, you can actually get a drill type of thing, which takes oil. And then, if you accidentally catch a fish, you'll have to go all the way back up, because once you catch a fish, then you'll have to go all the way up, since the fish is going to be biting on the thing. And then I guess your fishing instincts will want to lure the line back up. And so on your way up, you have to capture all the fish so you can get a bigger outcome of money. And then once you get the fish up there, you have to start shooting all the fish. So now you can achieve new stuff at the store. Like all kinds of things that help the fish float in the air more, or types of guns that help you shoot the fish better. So there's a lot of choices to so there's a lot of choices that you can use. And that's basically the view of the game. <laughs> I wonder if this game will appeal to fans of standard average fishing. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? They would be they would find the game hilarious. Yeah. That's a no man or fishing. Because, uh, you know, every time you go into a Target or Walmart or wherever, they always have fishing games there. Yeah. Like big bass fishing and hunting games. Exactly. They're everywhere. And they sell a lot. Yeah. So you would think this is not a game category, but it's actually, it does fishing is a big game category. Yeah. And I think in the real world, actually, fishing is considered... Like the third biggest money sport there is after football and some other thing. Yeah. Because there's so many fishing tournaments around the nation. And we're talking real fishing here. Um, so it's actually, uh, you know, people forget that fishing is a big American pastime. All right. So the Xbox One. Yes. Yes. It's looking <laughs> decent. Yeah. It's looking all right. Yeah. I think we got some photos of what it looks like. You know, Microsoft actually announced Bryce it on, Parker. what was it, the 21st, right, of May? Yeah. So they had a big press conference. You've got a funny video about that, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, you should bring that up on your phone while we're, let's see if we see the, the photo of the Xbox. We've got photos that show what it looks like and uh, with the back. So there it is with the Connect, which is now a standard part of the Xbox package, the Connect yeah. 2. And uh, apparently they've gotten rid of all the lag on it. Here you can see all the connectors on the back. It looks pretty much like a PC. Uh, it's got HDMI in, so you put your cable box into it, HDMI out, right? Yeah. Ethernet, all the usual stuff. It's um, nice to see them pushing towards uh, more PC-like. Yeah, you approve of that. Yes. You approve going more PC-like as opposed to console? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, the two machines, uh, we're going to talk about the PlayStation 4 in a minute, but they're very similar. The specs yeah. are almost almost the same in yeah. terms of amount of memory and speeds and, you know, and all that other stuff, the kind of ports they have on them. So it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top when... Yeah, I think it's of, going to come down to who's got the better games on their yeah. console. So Xbox always has the Halo, yeah. has the Gears of War... Mm -hmm. has Forza Motorsports and what other big exclusives uh, you know I'm not the Xbox well, guy so it's they actually <sighs> it's mainly based on TV watch TV it's TV 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 remote TV experience TV 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 sports TV 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 anybody TV TV and TV 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 you think that the, the, the main emphasis of Xbox One is TV 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 Xbox, go home. TV. Or the graphics, actually. Yeah. I heard they're trying to improve bigly on the graphics. Mainly on the graphics? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because the Xbox is already pretty close to a PC as it is from the beginning. Well. Well, the underlying operating system is like a stripped-down version of Windows. Yeah. It's just not as powerful at the moment. Right. Like well, I think if they bring this out, it'll be more powerful than most people's... You know, unless yeah. you've got a super-duper gaming rig, it's going to be yeah. more powerful than most people's PCs. And, of course, a lot of people are saying this could be the last, last set of consoles ever because the phones are getting so powerful and the iPads, like, you know, who's going to spend all the money on a separate game machine? Mm. But... I don't know if I agree with that. What oh. do you think? You think there's consoles in your future after these? It'll be like a 5 and a Xbox, what, 2? Yeah. Xboxes. Or an Xbox 760. I mean, people were, people were originally thinking that the name of the new Xbox should be Xbox 760. Yeah. Because of the original name, Xbox 360. Yeah. So... They decided to go with one, I guess, as a unification, right? Yeah. Say everything is all one. They picked a number out of a hat. They picked a number out of a hat. It just happened to be one. Um, so maybe we'll throw up some stats and if we can find them about what's going on with that Xbox. Do you have any other uh, impressions off of the... Oh, so they've invested a billion dollars in uh, games for their... A billion? Yeah, one billion dollars. In- so this is a billion dollars of development money Yeah. that they're going to put into various to games. getting exclusives for their system. Uh, they did have a lot of exclusives on uh, the last Xbox. There yeah. were a lot of things that only came out... Well, they were exclusive for like six months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so they've got, I believe, what is it, about eight or nine new games. Yeah, like completely exclusive and, new games. Yeah. Possibly. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have a lot of add-ons to it as well. So You mean uh, like accessory type add-ons? Yes. DLC the plug and in. all that. Oh, DLC, yeah. Including, so, I believe, a possibility of, I think, video game Killer Instinct? Killer Instinct? You're going to bring yeah. that back? They might be bringing that back. That's legendary. Look up Killer Instinct if you uh, have never heard of that game. <laughs> um, what other games have you heard might be exclusives? Uh, that just that one. They've just announced that, one. that they're going to have some new IP. I don't know if that means rebooting old things or. Yeah, you never know. When they claim something's new, new, it isn't always. Well, E3 is next month, and that's when they're going to. Everybody's going to unleash all the rest of the details. Yeah. Which brings us to PlayStation Four. So we know what the Xbox looks like. PS Four, we don't know what it looks like. We know what the controller looks like. Yeah. And there's a picture of it right there. It's got a little touch surface now. You can see that this is the first actually probably substantial redesign since they introduced the yeah. actually the analog controller back on PS1 because the DualShock was really just a little bit of a change from that. But yeah. this is uh, very different. Yeah. And you can see that where that blue bar is, they've integrated, um, that's where the motion control color thing. So now instead oh, of waving oh a wand God. around, yeah. it sees that strip and will detect it. They that's might have probably. actually originated from the um, PlayStation Move. Because they're starting to in- implement, like, gyroscopes into the controllers like they did in the PS Vita. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when you swing the controllers around, you'd be able to get a I've lot also, more sensitivity. I've also heard on the side itself that because they put the light there, it, it also shows, like, if you, it also changes color, like, if you got hit or something. Like oh, on a so it'll game. flash red if you got hit in the shot in the head. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. Um, you got to keep this the appropriate age level, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I can't, I can't give some of my usual commentary. Um, actually, that's just a joke. Um, so the PlayStation 4 is going to be pretty similar in horsepower, yeah. right? I think people are saying it has a little bit more powerful graphics processor, but nobody's really sure because everything yeah. is kind of customized and nobody's really revealed all their information yet. Exactly. At E3, we will know what it looks like. Yeah. And probably more specific on the actual stats because they can't keep that hidden forever. Yeah. Um, and we do know that Sony owns like uh, at least twelve, I think, development studios that pretty much yeah. make only games for PlayStation and and good ones. Yeah. Um, so they've always had a strong lineup of games. The question is, how many will be ready at launch? The PlayStation, I think, has always suffered from having a weak launch lineup. Yeah. Not enough good games ready when the console came out. But I think this time around, they've kind of figured that out. Yeah. And they're going to have more games just ready to go right at the start when it comes on. And then, of course, the big question is price. So what do you think is a fair price for the next console? I'd say 400 
four hundred. Two hundred your... to five hundred. Yeah, this is like the price is right. I think that's that's about right. If they go yeah, much higher than that, there. I, I don't think it'll get down to two hundred. <laughs> Even the current ones are uh, still over two hundred, right? So. I'm not quite sure if they're that expensive still, but they were. What was yeah. the PlayStation Three? Six hundred. Yeah, yeah, it was super expensive. It was, Nobody could really. You, you know, if you're going to charge sixty dollars for a new game, charging six hundred for the console. I mean, yeah. that was I think a big mistake. Probably, probably they had to do it because yeah. the the money they invested in the last one, but it's. That, that's a mistake. The, the market, I don't think, can support 600 bucks for a console. I'm not sure about that either. So... I mean, if you're going to be paying $600, you could probably then just buy, like, a really nice gaming... <laughs> <laughs> and get Steam. Yeah. But, you know, there, there is a small rumor going around that's, uh, that Valve somehow will develop a Steam, basically, console that's a Steam console. Yeah, they've got a couple of those... Um, coming out. And I guess what we'll talk about in a future episode is that Ouya, which was the little open source uh, Kickstarter cube. They're actually opening Fez on that as well. Yeah? Oh, so they're bringing they that have, over? They actually have a YouTube channel where they show all the games that they're going to feature on Ouya. Yeah. Like, on the available store. So, but that that isn't, I mean, when's it supposed to come out? Summer. Is it this summer? Yeah. Alright, well, we'll cover that in the, probably the next show we'll have a big yeah. roundup on what's actually coming out and not coming out. Um, so PlayStation 4, I don't think there's much left to say on that. PlayStation 3 is going to end the year quite strong with a lot yeah. of good games that are coming out. Um, I'm not sure what's in the release queue for uh, Xbox, the current Xbox. I'm sure they'll have a few games, but yeah. I think this is also going to be a kind of an interesting, awkward transition for them because they're really, they have a lot of strong momentum going into the fall with the current lineup. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation and Xbox, yeah. and then they're bringing out a new console, and I think there are some games that may be released on both, yeah. um, just to kind of transition people. And also, we know that there's no PS4 backwards compatibility, uh, right? So they're going to sell both for the same time for a while, just like they did with the PS2. They kept in Xbox One. Have you heard anything about whether uh, you can play old Xbox games on it or not? It might be possible to. Yeah, because I think their architecture hasn't changed that yeah. much. PlayStation's moving to an x86 architecture away from their custom cell processor, which was PowerPC based. Yeah. So there's not going to be any backwards compatibility. I'm pretty sure they will have uh, like a PS2 chip maybe in there for some of the older or you know PlayStation One chip. Yeah. But then again, all that stuff can be emulated a lot. Yeah. I don't know. You know, they base it all on sales, which is yeah. A shame. But Steam is going to have a summer stale, and a lot of people are going to lose their money on Steam. Lose their money that's on Steam? That's mainly the logic of it. Yeah. Well, we'll see. All right. I think that about wraps it up. Uh, maybe we'll kick out with one last game trailer here on the way out if we've got uh-huh. time. And I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Anybody got any final comments? Look, that's that's some concept. Oh, yeah. We forgot. We have concept art here. So people are imagining what PlayStation might look like. Um, obviously, the controllers, now we know what it looks like, but one person thinks it's going to be a nice white box like this. That's kind of futuristic. Mm-hmm. And then there's a couple. This one, I don't understand. I mean, it looks cool, but, like, yes. everything that you... You couldn't put that on anything on top of that. Like, it would all no. slide off. And then there's this one that kind of looks like a Mac Mini, almost. Uh, it looks like a Roku, actually. Or a Roku, yeah. It'd be kind of cool, actually, I think, if it looked like that. Um, and I don't know if there are any other ones, uh, but oh, this is a one that came out very early on. Yeah. Uh, this Made is pretty blast. pretty far fetched. Maybe yeah. maybe PlayStation six or seven will look like that. And my guess is that it's uh, oh, oh, and this is the stereo PlayStation I. So they don't have the Connect and that type of technology, mm-hmm. but they they have the PlayStation I, which has microphone arrays and speakers and they also have two cameras. stereo cameras. Which yeah. makes it so that you can actually place your picture in 3D because they yeah. can also do that with the 3DS. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you'll be able to position things in 3D space within the room. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you ever play? There were a couple games that made use of the eye that were these sort of VR games. There was one where you had these little battle tiles and mm. little monsters would appear and it looked like they were on your living room carpet. <laughs> I don't think the resolution was that great, if I recall. Yeah. And there was one with a pet sort of Furby monkey thing. I saw that one. It you was saw that one? What? 
Uh, What's a something iPad, right? iPad, yes. Yeah, I don't know how well that... I tried so. that with my family once. It was awfully hard to get the eye camera in place, so it was all messed up. It kept going everywhere. I remember, yeah, I remember having a lot of trouble with the demo, trying to just, like, get the camera in the right spot so it would Believe see me. what the floor was. and. Believe me, it was hard even trying to pet the monkey. <laughs> Well, you know, they're wild animals, so they really should stay out there in the wild. Well, I think it's time to wrap this show up. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's all for this episode of Gaming Rainbow, and we will be back with another show probably once E3 is finished and we hear all the juicy details. And a special yep. thanks to our new technical director. That's right. We have a new technical director, Tyler. He's in there, an actual switcher. We have a real switcher now. Yeah. So the fact that you've been seeing different camera angles and things is all thanks to Tyler. Yeah. Because uh, well, we were not doing that well last time. No. <laughs> and uh, Lance is here now as a permanent part of the hosting staff. And he'll be covering all sorts of cool independent games and uh, giving us another perspective on everything and keeping us in line so that Bryce and I behave. Yeah. All right. That's it for today. Where's the yeah. camera over there? All right. We'll wave goodbye, everybody. Good. Have fun out there.